Well, look at this little cutie. We're gonna be taking a look at the Breville Bambino Plus today. So, buckle up. Now before jumping into the video, I'll ask, I know that annoying ask, if you take a second, hit the like, the subscribe, it really helps, check out the links below, yada, yada, yada. Let's go ahead and continue on. Now, about two years ago when I started my YouTube channel, I made a video on the Breville Bambino, not on the Plus, on the Bambino, and um, did, did some stuff with it, showed you how you can make nice latte art with it, pull some nice espresso with it, and then a little later that year in 2021, I did a video with the Bambino Plus, and I showed you how to do the dimmer modification, which I'll talk about later in this video. Now, now, there is something I want to disclose before we continue forward, just to get it out of the way right here. I have not made a single video on a Breville product since the Breville dual boiler video of 2021. I have done some consulting for them on, you know, some fun stuff, some top secrets type stuff, just like with some other brands. And I'm very intense and anal about making sure that my perceived bias is non-existent or as little existent as possible. So what I'm doing with them has nothing to do with Bambino, has nothing to do with anything I will ever review from them. And on top of that, what I do is a separate kind of agreement and I ensured that whatever that agreement is, it will not have any dictation over what I can say about other products. I can come out here and I can take this and I can beat it with a hammer and say it's the worst machine in the world and it, and it doesn't matter. But I can assure you I am doing my best to be as impartial as possible. I really don't think that it's really playing anything to it because I try to be as objective as possible in these reviews and pointing things out. And today there are negative things I'm gonna say about this machine. I do wanna be able to review this because it's a very um, pertinent machine with regards to the cost and I've been doing a lot of expensive stuff lately so we're gonna go with a more budget friendly option. So this is the Bambino Plus, the Breville Bambino Plus, and it is uh, a sub $500 um, espresso machine. Obviously, it depends on where you're at around the world. I believe in the UK, it's like 400 pounds. Throughout Europe, it's like 449 euros. In the US, it's like 469 US dollars, something like that. But it kind of, you know, it depends on where you're at in the world. Uh, it's probably even cheaper in Australia where, where they're um, originated. So I have the Sage brand because I'm in Europe, whereas it's Breville most everywhere else in the world. What we have in this machine is a 54 mil group head with their new Thermajet thermocoil technology inside. I say new, it's probably a few years old by now. But essentially what that means is it's taking water through a coiled up system. It spreads out the surface area of the water and it flash heats it so that you have espresso ready water within three seconds. No joke. It's going to flash and then once it's done flashing, it's ready to go. and now it's ready. But of course, a lot of questions need to be answered. How is the thermal stability on this? What about the pressure? What separates this? Is this good out of the box? Is this gonna last a while? How feasible is it to maintain? What is the best way to pull a shot on it, taking into account its build and its construction? Well, today we're gonna get into all of that. Now to start, I'm gonna just talk about what I think is the best way to pull shots because I'm sure a lot of you watching this are maybe beginners in the coffee world or you don't really know what you're doing or this is a first machine, a first purchase. For those people who want the nerdy stuff, just stick around and we'll get to it. This machine actually does a fantastic job in two big ways. The espresso, as long as you're pulling medium to dark roast in under 25 second shots, you don't really need to do anything other than put the coffee in and hit go, and it's gonna pull a really nice coffee for you. I would just highly recommend using the unpressurized baskets, and again, staying around a one to two, a one to two and a half ratio with 25 seconds or less. My thermal testing shows that it is more than adequate uh, without having to do anything crazy, like having to hit flush or hit the water for a long time or use pre-infusion or anything like that. The shower screen on it is adequate. The basket, when you get the single walled ones, are actually made really well. I showed in my expensive basket video that the construction of Breville baskets actually rivals the precision of those of like VST and IMS and Pullman. So the baskets are nice. The Porta filter in the with the Plus is a much more weightier one. The one on the regular Bambino is made of a, a coated aluminum, so it's much lighter and it doesn't have as much thermal retention, thermal uh, thermal capabilities essentially. Whereas this one is much more heavy. It's got a stainless steel head um, and, and it just does a better job. The biggest thing on this for beginners, the steam wand. It's an automated steam wand. You have 
have three temperature settings and you have three froth settings. So the temperature settings, obviously cooler, medium, hot, and then the the, the settings for the froth is almost no foam, medium foam, and then lots of uh, like more foam, I guess. It's difficult to kind of quantify the amount of foam because it depends on the amount of milk you have in your pitcher. I'm just gonna pull a quick shot, pour some latte air. I'm not gonna steam it at all. This brush steel one is a pain in the butt. If you're gonna get one of these, I highly recommend getting one of the colorways like the black truffle or the, the like sea salt or something, whatever it's called. Another incredible thing is this has a 1.9 liter tank on the back. You're gonna be able to fill it and keep it for a while. I would just highly recommend either using the filter that comes with it or using water that's not going to scale. I do not recommend getting in, having to descale this, having to mess with the insides. It is cheaply built. It is. It's, I mean, it's cheaply built. There's no getting around that. Out of the box. Without question, in my opinion, this is the best sub $500 espresso machine on the market. The Gaja Classic Pro, the Gaja Classic Pro. If you are willing to modify, it's fantastic. But out of the box, when it's sub 500, it is not better than this. This out of the box has a PID controller. This out of the box has an overpressure valve. This out of the box has its pump set to nine bar. You have the steam wand, whereas on the Gaja Classic Pro, the steam power is really weak and you, a lot of people modify it with Ranchilio steam wand. So if you're looking for the best value, at sub 500, Gaja Classic Pro, through and through, but you're gonna have to modify it. You're gonna have to spend money in it. You're gonna have to get your hands dirty. You're gonna have to get inside of it because the way it comes stock is not ideal. With this, you open the box up, plug it in, you hit go. Within a minute, you're pulling shots that are Super lightly roasted washed Columbia from Coffee Collective. So almost no crema. And look at that. Beautiful texture, fantastic. And can't guarantee how long it'll last, let's just be honest. And I know a lot of these do end up in landfills, which is a sad reality. Uh, but I know that there soon will be more and more of these parts available for because of the right to repair, at least throughout Europe. And so you'll be able to make a lot of changes uh, down the line if that were to happen. A few other quirks about this is the drip tray is absolutely tiny. I would highly recommend dumping it every, after every use just to be safe. It's very easy to take off, but it does fill up. I dumped it right before making this and there's a decent amount of water. Some of that's rejected from the overpressure valve. Some of it is just um, from the steam one, it auto purges, which is a really nice feature, but it pushes a lot of water out and it, and it just, it tends to fill up pretty easily. I'm gonna take another sip of this cause it's it's money. So it does come with a, with a pretty lame tamp. I'll be honest, it's a little too small for the portafilter that it comes with. So we do have this portafilter, it has plastic kind of inside on the bottom, which I, I, I don't love. Um, and so you have that, um, and you have a pressurized basket that typically comes stock in there, but they do now give you the solid, the single wall baskets, which is what I definitely recommend if you have a grinder. If you're using pre-ground coffee, obviously you're relegated to the pressurized baskets. And then you can buy these from Breville as well, which it's like a funnel for the shot. So you can put it in like this, dump your grounds, so you don't have a big mess. You can use WDT if you want, link a video there. I've seen so many people show you how to use this and they're all, they're pretty much all wrong that I've seen. If you don't currently have a scale, this is actually a really nifty tool. You fill the basket up, you tamp it, then you place this inside and twist it. And if any of the coffee comes unsettled or it digs into the bed, that means you have too much coffee. If you put it in and you're twisting it and there's a big gap between the bottom of this and the top of the bed of coffee, you have a little too little coffee. So add a little bit more. So it's a volumetric way of ensuring your dose is correct for the basket. This is not, again, not a distributor. Okay, now that we got that out of the way. And now a quick word about the sponsor of today's video. Stand Art Magazine. Now this magazine is a really cool combination of different articles from people in the coffee industry as well as without the coffee industry, all about coffee. Only available in subscription format for 89 US dollars annually. Oh look, when I'm brewing in the morning, just like I have my grinder, I've got my kettle, I've got my coffee. You also have a friend in here smiling. I don't know who this person is, but the smile radiates and makes me want to be happy for the day. Oh, my friend Morgan Eckroth, whom I coached in the United States Barista Championship and the World Barista Championship. We're all friends here. This is the article where my name is littered everywhere. This is issue 29 and is what you'll get if you use my promo code below, which is www.standartmag.com slash 
Lance. And no, there's no Hedrick there, so you don't have to mess up my last name by putting an unnecessary in. Soon coming, there's gonna be an article fully written by me. My promo is gonna give you a free magazine, and you'll just have to pay for global shipping, nine US dollars. And if after six weeks you enjoy it, as I do, you can add the full subscription annually for 89 US dollars, and you get the four magazines a year with a sample of coffee every time. Enjoy that. Check that link out below, and let's have some fun with Standart. Welcome to those of you who may have skipped here for the nerdy stuff, and if you're someone who watched the beginning and you're now here, welcome, love you, thanks for staying. Let me take a sip. First of all, we're gonna get rid of this. I don't like any of these, to be honest with you. I don't like this plastic. I, don't, I really don't like the pamper, um, and I, I don't like the portafilter. Let me take this basket, because I do actually like the basket. The baskets are nice. I reached out my friend, Steven Monty, at Art Presso, and I said, hey, there's like nothing for 54 millimeter machines. Let's make some cool stuff. We made a naked portafilter, but this allows you to kind of see what's going on at the bottom of your shot to help correct puck prep issues, LH, you know. And then we made a little nice tamper, a little LH tamper. The bottom is a little bit more flat and it's gonna retain its edge a little bit longer uh, just because of the quality parts. And then on the side, I have this nice little Porta Keeper stuff that was sent to me for free. I kind of like that. You can kind of store stuff on the side. Now, I don't necessarily recommend having to change the shower screen on here, but IMS does offer a shower screen for the Bambi. You can use that funnel if you want. I prefer something a little nicer. This one is from Swartz Design. Just makes it a little bit easier, a little bit more aesthetic, but if you are interested, you can check the link in bio. Obviously, I get a kickback whenever my things are bought. So let's talk about thermal testing. I worked quite a bit of time in order to figure out what's going on in this machine. Now, normally, I really like to use my SCASE device, which is this right here. You've seen it in other videos. So what you do is you take this, it has this little piece inside that's to simulate a puck and the, the amount of heat it's gonna take. And then you have the thermoprobe housed right inside. And this is supposed to give you like what the water's temperature is that's being ejected from the machine. But sadly, this is a 58 mil basket and it's built into this. So I took my Bluetooth thermometer that I can hook up to my Smart Espresso Profiler app, still in beta, and I put a thermoprobe in it. A pressurized basket and I drilled a hole right in the middle, right there. <laughs> And what I did is I fed this through the bottom of the portafilter uh, inside the split shot one that comes with Breville, and I fed it through here. I housed it with tape, and the idea was is I wanted to cut off as much of that hole as possible. I purposely used a pressurized because I knew the hole would be big, and I knew that water was gonna cascade through there. And then I ground coffee really, really fine to create essentially concrete inside to really stop water from just wanting to rush out the center. Uh, it worked enough for a few experiments, but it became really difficult, and it was actually, it wasn't really smart to do that. That, but I got some decent readings. Also took the TPD measurement tool from Passato, which is specifically made, this part is specifically made for Breville, and then you can just screw this into their different portafilters. And this measures water, but there is a fundamental flaw in this. Inside, you have the thermoprobe stick it up right in the middle, but you have all this empty space. Whereas the SCASE has that thing to emulate a puck, this has nothing. So it's sucking heat out with the metal itself, and it's giving you kind of a skewed reading as well. Now, I did multiple shots in a row allowing water to fill, but water heats up a lot faster and a lot more efficiently than a puck does. I did at least 10 hours of thermal testing. I did a couple hours last night, and a few weeks ago I did multiple hours. Last night I did it with Juli, the barista champion of Portugal, and we did a lot of shots. So with all these devices, here are the conclusions I've made. It is necessary to purge before every shot. If you're wanting to have control over your temperature, it is necessary to purge. As it's sitting here, it will superheat what's inside of the, the thermal coil itself, and then when it comes out, it turns into kind of like a steam. So if you watch and you listen, you're gonna hear the gurgling of boiling water and you're gonna see steam come out. And you wanna get rid of that before you're shot. So watch this. There, that's all you need. You can hear the bubbling of the water and you see the steam, but then you hear it stop. And that is an important part to get out. As shots run at about the 20 to 25 second mark, you're gonna see quickly increasing temperature. Now, early on, it gets up to 90 degrees very quickly, around 88 to 91, honestly, was kind of the range that I saw. And about 20 to 25 seconds, mostly around 25. Well, at 20, it started to rise pretty quickly, and at 25, it hit about 93 degrees Celsius. After 25 seconds, it would continue to rise until it hit 97. Now, of course, that's inside of this. So this doesn't take into account all of the temperature the puck would take away and how it would delay the increase in the temperature. But the water coming out is obviously getting there because it can't read that temperature unless it's hitting that temperature. So really long shots are not ideal unless you're using a cool portafilter, which at the beginning is fine because it's gonna suck a lot of that heat out. So when I was also testing, I filled this with, with room temp water and I put it in and let it go to read it. So 
obviously the water started at about 22, 23 C, and then it took up until 40 seconds to hit that temperature. Now I know all of this is just, you know, pocket science kind of stuff. I, it's hard to really know how to replicate a puck. So I actually filled a puck in this, tamped it down and did a few shots with that. And what I noticed was in puck temperature every time hit about 88 to 89 degrees Celsius and it stayed constant for about 30 seconds. So in a real in a real puck, it was doing that. However, there wasn't much release because of how much tape I put in and everything else. So that's assuming there's kind of like not really much flow. What I noticed with this is the more I open the flow up, this is a valve right here, and I can open flow up to let more water come out and less pressure. The higher pressure, the less the valve is open, etc. The more flow I allowed, the more the temperature dipped. So if you wanted to make this into a Sprover machine, you could hit 80 to 82 degrees Celsius on one bar shots all day. And it's, it's like the perfect temperature for a Sprover. You're asking how do you make a Sprover? Check out my uh, how to dimmer mod your machine. It's gonna void your warranty, obviously, but you'll be able to have flow control over your unit which that means you could buy a $500 machine and make it dedicated to Sprovers, which would be awesome. So you toss in a dimmer like on a light switch, you just route it into the pump. It's a very simple modification and I walk you through it in that video with a completely different haircut, mind you. So with that, you're gonna have much lower temperatures, which is fantastic. I recommend doing mostly quicker shots on this unless you use a cooled portafilter or if you freeze your portafilter or if you do something like that, that will allow you to elongate your shot without getting too hot in the portafilter itself. After full infusion hits, it does tend to dip four degrees so it'll go up to 88 or 89 during the pre-infusion phase and then it will dip to about 84, 85 for a couple of seconds and go back up. Now that was noticed on this machine. I didn't notice when I had the probe inside the puck, but again inside the puck was about 40 degrees until about 15 seconds in the shot when the whole puck was up to temperature. So I wouldn't be able to see the dip there, obviously. With this, I was able to see the dip. I don't know if that was real or if it's something to do with the fact that this doesn't have any insert. I don't know. A con of this machine actually starts on paper as a pro and becomes a con because it's presented as a pro. In the manual, they say, you can hold the button down as long as you want and it will pre-infuse. When you let go, the pre-infusion will stop and it will hit full infusion. Essentially what that means is it's gonna just spit water out without really inacti uh, activating the pump at its full force. Then when you let go, the pump will come in full force. This simply isn't true. I read the manual, I watched videos of people online about this just cause I thought maybe I was doing something wrong. So what we're gonna do is we'll have a timer on the screen and you'll be able to hear between the time I push the button to the time that you hear the pump come on. All right, you ready? So I'm not holding it down. It starts. I didn't purge, there's steam, get over it. Listen, pump kicks on full force. Okay, it's at full force. And I can verify this because I did it with my pressure reader on the TPD you saw earlier that, that reads temperature that I was complaining about because it doesn't have the spacer inside. Well, it also reads t pressure. And the pressure every time, when you hear that pump, it immediately is kicking up to nine. So there's a direct correlation between the flow. I also measured flow rate. It goes from about three to four mils a second for the pre-infusion, shoots up to about nine a second for the full flow, full pressure. So that's the pre-infusion to full infusion is when you hear that pump. Now, I'm gonna hold the button down as they say in the manual, I'm gonna hold it down and I'm gonna keep holding it, but you're gonna hear the pump turn before I let go. And it's gonna be at the same exact time, so we're gonna cue the timer and go. I'm still holding it and that pump kicked on, I'm still holding it. Now I'll let go and there's no change. The flow rate's high, the pump is fully engaged. And as I said on my reader, it was hitting nine bar. Just take it out of the manual, maybe? Please take care of it. If you're done with it, don't just toss it into a landfill. Let, uh, like reuse parts or send it back or something in order to get a longer life out of these materials. This is not gonna be something like um, some of the E61s that are made of all metal that you could like repurpose all the parts of. Uh, and, and it's not at that price point, but for what it is, Wow, it, it does deliver. That's about it for me today. I hope that you brew something tasty and cheers.